Uh, what's going on, everyone? It's Andy Singer with the Heartland Institute, bringing you more from climaterealism.com. So today we're going to talk about energy source subsidies, just how much money from the government is going to certain energy sources. Is it going to renewables? Is it going to conventional energy sources like fossil fuels, coal, natural gas? Well, I know you're going to find out. So first, I ask you, where do you think it's going? Renewables or conventional energy sources? Renewables by a huge margin. Here's a few takeaways. One, fossil fuels and conventional energy receive almost no federal subsidies. That's true. We're going to get into the numbers in a bit. Two, wind power by itself receives more subsidies than all conventional energy sources combined. All of them combined, wind gets more. And three, solar power by itself receives more subsidies than all conventional energy sources combined. So both, renewable, both of the main renewables, wind and solar, are getting more than all other sources combined. And it's past this because wind and solar receive a lot of indirect subsidies that aren't like directly from government payouts. And here's a few of those. One, wind and solar don't pay for energy production on government owned lands like conventional energy sources do. So that's a very clear incentive for renewables. Two, wind and solar benefit from renewable power mandates that force consumers to purchase wind and solar power. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you're forcing people to buy that, that's directly benefiting those industries. That's clear government manipulation. But okay, so those are some key takeaways, but now let's actually get into the specifics, the numbers. So what I'm gonna show you is a chart that comes from the US Energy Information Administration and the Direct Federal Financial Interventions and Subsidies in Energy in Fiscal Year 2016. So it measures 2010, 2013, and 2016, and it shows how much government money is going to certain energy sources. Let's check it out. All right, so this looks like a lot, but it's really not that bad. So we're gonna start on the top left where you can see year and support type. Moving to the right, we can see the energy sources, coal, refined coal, natural gas and petroleum liquids, nuclear, and then renewables. And that's all we're gonna to cover today. So then if you go down a bit, we're gonna start with 2010. So if you go down a bit from 2010, you can see share of total. And this is measuring how much of the money, the government money that goes into each source is of the total government money. So it's pretty much like money that goes into coal divided by all government money for the energy sector. So coal, we can see is 2%. Refined coal is 0%, natural gas and petroleum liquids are 8%, nuclear is 4%, and renewables are 42%. So in 2010, renewables clearly received most of the money. 2013, we're going to look at share of total again. Coal is 4%, refined coal is 0%, natural gas and petroleum liquids are 10%, nuclear is 5%, and renewables are 52%. So renewables even went up in 2013. It's the Obama years, of course. All right, 2016. So again, we'll go to coal. We can see that it's 8% of total spending. Refined coal, the numbers aren't available. Natural gas and petroleum liquids is actually negative 5%. So it was not just not receiving subsidies. It was actually like you had to pay the government for this. And that came in through tax expenditures. Nuclear was at 2% and then renewables are at 45%. So when someone tells you that renewables are receiving not nearly as many subsidies as fossil fuels or conventional energy sources. They're wrong. They're either wrong or they're lying, but they're wrong. It's receiving way more by just a massive margin. And then here's the actual debate point that some people will make. They'll say, you know, that's true. Renewables are receiving more subsidies. But if you go back to you know, the 1930s, you can see that conventional energy sources were receiving subsidies. So now we need to subsidize renewables to push them back ahead. And when I hear that kind of argument, it brings up an old Milton Friedman quote, and this isn't verbatim, but it's very close. I'm just doing this on the spot. He said, bad government policy does not excuse more get bad government policy. So if there's a bad policy, that doesn't mean just slap a Band-Aid on it and do more bad stuff. It means maybe attack the root of the problem. And the root of the problem here is that we're subsidizing these energy sources in general. We should let them compete in a free market. In a free market, conventional energy sources will win, and they're winning right now, despite the fact that we're just putting massive amounts of government, which is taxpayer money, it's our money, to these other energy sources. Until tomorrow, this is Andy Singer with the Heartland Institute. Peace.